So you know who's amazing? Eric Overmeyer. Eric Overmeyer is amazing. You've heard me mention him before, so today I decided I'd just go ahead and read one of his plays. Because I love him with all of my heart. His plays. Not him, necessarily. I mean, I'm sure he's a nice guy, but that sounded stalkerish and that's not how I meant it. I have this. This is in all of his plays. It's three of them. One of which I've already read, and one of which I have read like 95% of, and then I was in New York, so I kind of got distracted by New York. I read the one that I hadn't read any of, and... Wah! So I read In Perpetuity Throughout the Universe. I've been saying In Perpetuity, which I know isn't right, but you say perpetual. You don't say perpetual. No, it's pronounced perpetuity, I think. So if that's wrong, don't hate me. In Perpetuity Throughout the Universe by Eric Overmeyer. This is arbitrary, just like everything else on this vlog, but I love this guy, and even though it's really surreal stuff, I love it. And here's why. Remember I was talking about the poetics yesterday? Well, Eric Overmeyer, I think, has one of those poetics that he loves with all of his heart and frequently makes the main character in his show, and that element is language. Eric Overmeyer writes some of the most interesting and unique and poetic and fascinating dialogue that I've ever read in any book or play ever. Reading it doesn't even do it justice. As I said, that's always true with a play, but with this dialogue, you really have to hear it to hear how it just floats through the air and goes into your ear and makes magic in your mind. I don't even know where I'm going with this. It's surreal, but in a way that at least for me, it's just beautiful and it works. And if you kind of understand the way that he writes, you can read one of his plays and get to the end and start laughing hysterically, which is what I did with In Perpetuity Throughout the Universe. I should probably tell you what it's about, shouldn't I? In Perpetuity Throughout the Universe is kind of about writers and kind of about conspiracy theorists, which is an interesting combination. It's about this company that ghost writes, and if you don't know what that means, a person who ghost writes is someone who helps another someone write a book but doesn't necessarily get credit for it. It's this group of ghost writers and writers, not writers like they're not in the sky or anything, so don't go all songy on me. No, ghost writers and their job basically is to ghost write for conspiracy theorists. And it sounds so weird, and it is, but it's so good because it doesn't make sense, but it does. And I'm sure that you're all watching this going, what on earth is wrong with you, child? But I swear it makes sense in some universe, just not this one. I feel like I'm defending why I think he's cool, but just, just, just read Eric Overmeyer or go see a play by him because he makes me smile and his language is amazing. And I think he also reminds me of E.E. E. Cummings, who is one of my favorite poets in the world. And in fact, the first and so far only play that I've completed writing is based on a poem by E.E. E. Cummings. And he's the same way, that he just does amazing, unique things with language. And Overmeyer is the same way. Not the same way, but similar. I wanted to find a quote that gave you a taste of Eric Overmeyer's language. So this is just a little snippet of a monologue. One of the characters is asking one of the other characters why she always holds her interviews at night. I like the solace, the ambient hum. I like the preternatural hush of offices after business hours. The checkerboard of lit and unlit windows in the buildings across the airspace. We are tempted to speculate. We are tempted to discern patterns. It just makes you want to hear more. Oh. I can't talk today, so sorry for that. I think I was more well-spoken when I was crazy. Bye.